Pacific bluefin tuna is in dire straits. It read that the tuna still contaminated with Fukushima radiation. It certainly is. Does this surprise you, humans? Your studies show that a poison, a killer called cesium, has invaded the young bluefin tuna. That if those tested a hundred percent are poisoned with the invisible killer cesium. The small tuna that migrated to your waters in the once great Pacific neighborhood are now polluted, contaminated, carrying a terrible poison with them. A killer. Yes, it is. You know, by human measurements, something we do not have a need for down here. March 11th, 2011, the whole earth became devastated by the hands of mankind himself. Something humans call nuclear power, which we here in the waters of earth call total insanity blew up after the great mixer of waters. You call those earthquakes. And the angers of the waters, which you call tsunamis. Yes, what a day that was. I remember it very well. Do you? You must not forget that day. In your measurements, that March 11th of 2011, for it will be in force for many, many of your human years to come. Many years will your mankind suffer the effects of your own technology failure, as will mine. Offspring will be mutated, those that survive the birthing. Many once are now no more. Yes, though you humans do not speak of this, many of your race and mine have already perished since the great shaking and disaster. And I warned you of your delicacy, the tuna, your tuna sandwich. I admit I had ulterior motives at the time. Yes, I really did not want to eat anything that was contaminated by this killing poison called radiation. Cesium, they call it. Your leaders in the America land form told you no concern needed. I told you of much concern needed. Still, your children ate the tuna fish sandwich that you yourself prepared. Oh, no, you didn't. Swam in the waters where we are struggling to survive. Now, in your own eeny news, you read that 100% of the young tuna are themselves contaminated by this, this demon, cesium, our seas. Our oceans, once the pools of great life forms and life-sustaining food 
for the humans. Oh, I hope you didn't hear my stomach growl when I said that. That we're humans. Well, as I was saying, the food. Yeah, are no more. No more. Once they used to be. Those great life forms and life sustaining foods that were in the oceans and seas are no more. What once they were and may never be again for many, many years. So again, I say, you might just want to step back away from that tuna sandwich. And yes, other seafood too. Well, you see, we all live, eat, and drink in these waters seasoned with your cesium, your strontium, and more contaminants, those poisons that kill without prejudice. Those that lest you and the insanity will prove to be forever. I hear through the schools that the great Columbia River, that's a real fine dining place for me. Well, at least the mouth of it. It's over there in your west, in that land called America. Well, it's now the home of nuclear waste, too. Really? Are your schools not open, humans? Do you not learn? Do you? Time for me to depart. Heed the evidence on your shorelines. Share what your own eyes can see. The shorelines, unlike your leaders, do not lie. So we'll catch you later, maybe in another year. Until then, abstain. Abstain from that tuna sandwich. So Fukushima really, really, truly came in and pounded the coastline. And what that means, though, is that this is Noah's model of just a dispersal from what they call venting, but the helicopters couldn't even drop a load, let alone someone going to invent them when the buildings were destroyed. But this model is only is continuously coming out of Japan, but it's only based up on a single building and just a single isotope and not a meltdown and not the reactor cores restored on top of the building. But the isotopes will come in, it'll hit in the clouds, they'll hit the Rocky Mountains, the Cascades. And then they'll drop a big payload because they're heavy clouds from the moisture across the Pacific Ocean, tens of thousands of miles of clouds produced on the Pacific Ocean every day. That affected the glaciers. It'll take 5,000 years after the isotopes disappear for the glaciers to, to reform. So we're in a lot of trouble. We see all the whales, all the birds starving to death, all the porpoise, the sea lions and seals confirmed and... and Many species of birds to go missing or have no young, etc. And then we see now constantly abnormalities in the wildlife that are not explained away by uh, history or observations from other countries. And so they went through a lot of trouble to bury it rather than deal with it. That simulation is based on the scenario in which Contaminated air was vented from the disabled number two reactor building on March 14th, three days after the massive earthquake and tsunami. Computer images show the radioactive material was lifted 5,000 meters in. And so you can see for yourself, it covers all the Pacific Ocean, all the mountain ranges. 
but it continued to come out of there. It didn't stop. This is the last stream until Sunday, and Sunday we're going to do an all-day stream. And all we got to do is have a conversation. Hiding is not going to solve anything, and hiding is going to create nothing but problems right away. Hiding is going to destroy even their... Even if people want to hide it or attempting to hide it, it's going to destroy their near future. Pretending it's not happening means we're denying the ability to come up with technology. What happens if we have another meltdown somewhere on the planet? And because we didn't take advantage of this and come up with the technology, the next meltdown will finish the planet. And so sending in the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society instead of Harvard University and the nuclear students and the nuclear academics and, and engineers and, you know, like the people that could actually do something useful, it, the job can't be done by taking the most vulnerable people in there for photo shoots. Like, all of these people are getting their picture taken, and that's it. The stuff in the tanks is so brutal, they want to release it in the ocean because they don't want to try to transfer it. You can't blame them in one sense that they don't want to transfer it. You can't leave it there because they can lose the site. If we lose the site, we're going to lose the planet for sure. It's only the most vulnerable that are there. Today, I'm pleased to announce that Canada and 10 other remaining members of the Trans-Pacific Partnership concluded discussions in Tokyo, Japan on a new comprehensive and progressive agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, the CPTPP. The agreement reached in Tokyo today is the right deal. Our government stood up for Canadian interests, and this agreement meets our objectives of creating and sustaining growth, prosperity, and well-paying middle-class jobs today and for generations to come. So you think it's going to get better? We all need to tone it down, take a deep breath, and look at reality. By the way, Fukushima is still spewing 300-700 metric tons of contaminated water every day in the Pacific Ocean. The ice wall is a failure. They will keep telling you it's working. The reality is, while permafrost does actually happen in Arctic areas, if you go to a coastal shelf, you will not find permafrost ever in the Arctic. The reason behind this is the salinity is too high in coastal soil. So, I guess the people at Toshiba who designed and made the ice wall might have some great engineers, but they don't know crap about geology. And again, this goes right back to uh, thinking outside the box engineers. I have no most respect for you, but you just can't think outside the box. There is a vast, vast number of variables working when you put your little machines or your little buildings or your little devices together. And if you're not thinking about every one of those variables, which is impossible, you are making something flawed. There will be a flaw eventually. This is the problem with nuclear energy. Oh, you think you can build something that will contain that uh, fission process forever? Well, you haven't. There's not one that can contain it forever. We know this. Um, every reactor leaks. We know this. You have to pop the cork to change the fuel. You're pouring out all sorts of isotopes all over the place. And you don't even tell the neighborhoods when you do it. To maybe advise them to stay inside or at least close the windows and uh, stay or, or get out of the neighborhood for a while until uh, the air clears. No, you don't. You just pop the cork. And this is why those zones all around every reactor have these high cancer rates, high rates of uh, leukemia, high rates of thyroid cancer. And you just don't tell anyone. You just say, oh, it's collateral damage. And there's a real problem. When our government, when, when our businesses, when our complete capitalist society sees everyone as a commodity in this consumerist quest, when we cease being human and become collateral damage, there's a problem. 
it's economics over life. And it just doesn't work. It's not sustainable. The FDA refuses to test fish for radioactivity. Government pretends radioactive fish is safe. The FDA says it won't monitor radiation in fish on the west coast of the U.S. They encourage daily news reports. North Pacific fish are so unlikely to be contaminated by radioactive material from the crippled nuclear power plant in Japan that there's no reason to test them, state and federal officials said this week. We have not been doing any testing. We've been working with NOAA to keep an eye on U.S. waters to see if there's any cause for alarm. And we have the capability to begin testing if that does occur. Asked to explain what type of monitoring was taking place in the ocean, Delancey said, you'd have to talk directly to NOAA. I don't really want to speak for another agency. We see a retreat in the nuclear industry. We see all the big corporations uh, shirk their responsibilities and throw it on the back of the taxpayers by being absorbed by the governments. Like France absorbed Riva, Westinghouse is being absorbed uh, by other entities. And they're passing the buck, so to speak, into other people's future. And so we have these multiple melted reactors that we've confirmed now have killed the planet. Uh, like in slow motion, it's going to kill the planet by wiping out the foundation of life itself. So it destroys the water and everything in the water. It destroys the bacteria in the forest and in the soil and in the trees. It's an insidious weapon and is being used effectively against this planet as such. You find in, there was so much documentation originally come out when we seen the mass die-offs and they desperately try to blame it on mysterious viruses, mysterious pathogens. I'm just trying to build a little story. And, but, but they didn't provide pictures of the pathogens or the viruses. But this was a coordinated effort with the nuclear industry, with the media, and with your universities to try to coerce the public that there was nothing wrong. 